My name is Jane McLevy and I am an organizer. I've been running campaigns across the environmental movement, the trade union movement, and then sort of political races, right, for candidates or ballot initiatives. There's one central thing I've taken away from the last 30 years of winning, helping people to win a lot of campaigns. And it's that in order for our side, the forces of good, to build the power that we need to win and win big, can win small things, but we actually need to win some big things at this point in America. So to build the power to win and win big, we have to spend way more time organizing and we have to spend less time mobilizing. And I wanna say what they are in the next minute. Organizing is about base expansion. It's about how do we bring people who are not yet convinced that the way to win is by their involvement. How do we actually bring them into the work with us? The truth is we have to spend a lot of time convincing the unconvinced that they need to join up and participate in order for anything in this country to change and change for the good, right, for the majority. Um, what most activist groups do unfortunately, is spend all their time doing what I call mobilizing, which means they spend all of their time talking to people who already agree with them. And if you spend all your time talking to people who already agree with you, all you're trying to do is get them to a rally, to vote, to march, to something. But that's very different than spending our time trying to persuade new people who have not been involved previously to get involved in the work. We need to do way more of that then the mobilizing is easier because we're working from a pool that's much bigger with many, many, many poor people involved. So we need to do more organizing and not as much mobilizing. So stop talking to everyone who already agrees with you and spend a lot of time talking to people who don't yet agree with you. That's one of the first things we have to do. Now, if we understand that talking to people who are not yet convinced that they need to be involved in the work is what's central to us being able to win and win big again in this country, um, two things matter. One is listening, and the second is what I call semantics, literally the words that we use, the word choices we make. Um, and they matter a lot uh, if we're gonna try and persuade someone to get involved in the work. So why does listening and the words we use matter? They matter if we're trying to get people who don't yet agree with us into our work, right? So why? One, people are not robots. And that's a good thing, right? Because we hear a lot about robots, but people are actually not robots. So. All human beings have different needs. I may care about healthcare, you may care about the environment, I may care about all, you know, we care about all these issues, but some issues move different people differently. So people are not robots. That's why we have to listen to what matters to them first. So secondly, people are crazy busy. Um, economic pressures in this country since the 1970s uh, have made it so that people are working more hours, more than one job. They work, frankly, too much. They have too little time with their family and too little time for themselves. So people are crazy busy. Um, in order for them to decide, I'm going to miss the kids' soccer match this week. I'm going to miss parent teachers, so whatever, whatever it is that they're going to be asked to miss in service of trying to change something, um, they have to believe that if they give two hours to a meeting with you, that there's a credible plan to win, that the, it's worth their time. That's what a credible plan to win means. Uh, so that's the second reason why listening matters a lot and the word choices. And the third is that because of that, people generally start with their self-interest. If they don't yet, if they're not yet super activists and signed on to all the work and we're trying to persuade them to get involved, we have to find out what matters to them. What's their self-interest? And then through the course of our campaign, part of what your job is, is to actually, one, persuade them to start doing the work and believe, and two, to then shift them from self-interest to collective action, right? That's part of what organizing is about. So when we think about persuasion, if that's a lot of what we have to do is persuade unconvinced people to get into the work, the persuasion works like this. It's about a 70-30 ratio. You have to spend 70% of your time in any conversation listening to the person that you're talking to or to the group of people that you're talking to. Um, and no more than 30% of the time talking. 70-30 is the rule for an effective conversation. Um, and then you have to show it. Like if someone says, I care a lot about healthcare, my family and I can't afford it, you have to actually repeat back at some point. So I hear that you and your family actually think that healthcare is a really huge crisis in America. Um, you have to say it back so that they know that you're listening. You're not just sitting there like a robot, you're actually listening and engaging. Um, and then lastly, you have to be able to do something called framing the choice. I'm gonna stick with healthcare. If I'm talking to somebody and I'm trying to persuade them to get involved in the incorruptibles and do some work with us, and they tell me that their family can't afford dire healthcare issues that they are dealing with. Um, I'm gonna actually at some point frame the choice for them. I'm gonna use the word you a lot in the conversation as in you. And I'm gonna say, look, the truth is, I hear you that you want a better healthcare system in this country, one that's more affordable. If you and your family 
don't get involved, the truth is nothing will change. That's framing the choice. You have to look at someone, listen to the issue that matters to them or the issues, repeat the issues back, and then frame the choice for them. Nothing's going to change if you do nothing. Things will only change if you decide to act. That's persuasion.